Hello and welcome to History Roundtable. My name is Andrea DeFusco Sullivan and I'm a professor of writing here at the American College of History and Legal Studies. And we welcome you today. It's my pleasure to be joined by two of my colleagues, uh, Dean Michael Chesson, Dean at ACHLS and our professor of history, and attorney Peter Malaguti, who is a professor at law of law at our Creating College, the Massachusetts School of Law at Andover. Welcome, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have uh, today a, a wonderful mix of guests, um, and we are reaching you, uh, Professor Malaguti, on a momentous day, the first day of classes of the summer session at the American College of History and Legal Studies. And it's also my wife's birthday, so it's quite a momentous day for me. Happy birthday to your wife. Thank Many you. more. <laughs> Very good. It is a momentous day. Um, would you both tell me and tell our audience a little bit about the classes that you teach at ACHLS? And Professor Malaguti, I'd like to start with you. Tell us about this class. Sure. Uh, this, this is my first class at ACHLS, uh, American Constitutional History. Um, in a way, it's right up my alley. I teach constitutional law um, at law school. The course will obviously differ in that it will focus more on the history of the American mm -hmm. Constitution than uh, the, the legal parameters of the Constitution and how it works. Um, it's a lot of information to cram into an, an eight-week period, but we start with um, uh, some of the um, um, uh, principles um, that uh, the Constitution was based upon. Uh, the students will start by uh, reading passages from Locke and Montesquieu and the like, um, and um, sort of then um, get into uh, culling out the personalities of the people who created the Constitution. And then we're going to tra trace the history of the Constitution from 1787 um, all the way through uh, until today. That's fascinating. Uh, I, I love it. I'm a nerd, but I love it. That's all right. I think our students will love it too. Michael. Tell me a little bit about the history classes that you teach here. I teach both parts of the American History course for juniors mm -hmm. in our beginning year. Uh, it's American History 1 and 2. We start in the fall with the earliest colonial settlements, uh, both English and their imperial rivals, mm -hmm. France and Spain and, great, uh, and other European countries, the Netherlands. And we take it up to the Civil War. And in the spring semester, we begin with the Civil War and Reconstruction and go up to the recent past. That's an eight-credit history course. So eight hours a week of history, three nights a week. And it's taught together with a required writing course, which you teach, I do indeed. Uh, four credit hours uh, a week. For the students or the families of prospective students who might be watching us today and listening, um, who want to hear and sort of maybe want to discern if ACHLS is for them. I'd like to touch on a couple of subjects, and, and the first one is, is a personal one that I'd like to ask both of you. How did you come? You're both men of considerable skill, obviously, both I, I, in, in terms of both the law and history. Michael, I know that you've published. You have two, Professor Malaguti. What intrigues you? about the subject or subjects that you teach and why why teach what tell me what intrigues you what ignites you about your subject matter and why don't we start with you Do professor Malaguti. Uh, what intrigues me about american constitutional history and american constitutional law um, is it, it's really something that every american needs to know mm -hmm. um, everyone needs to know how their government runs and the principles upon which the government was founded. Um, the subject matter can be very difficult and very abstract um, at times, but the genius of the Constitution and the, the system of government that um, was formed just seems to shine through all these, um, all these materials. Um, in regard to um, um, why I teach, um, you know, I, I have a feeling that teaching, in a way, is, is, is like a calling. Um, some people are good at it, some are not, some are drawn to it, some are not. Um, those who like to teach, like to teach, and they've, they've, they've had this uh, notion for quite a while. Um, I started out teaching in law school, um, uh, and I'm really excited about teaching in, in, in the undergrad um, uh, curriculum here. Yes, and I know that you have been a frequent visitor to, to our students here. 
um, you and, and other professors, particularly yourself and, and Dean Larry Velville from the law school, have been frequent visitors and contributors to student conversations and to events that we have here at the college, which is a great boon to our students. We'll talk about that some more, too. Dr. Chesson, how about you? I mean, you're uh, a respected <coughs> author. Uh, I know that you're a sought-after speaker. Why teaching? I grew up with history. I was born in Virginia. I taught history at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, for 32 years. And my special field is the Civil War and Reconstruction, some related areas like American slavery mm -hmm. in the Old South. But there wasn't a year that went by at UMass Boston that I didn't also teach one or both halves of the U.S. history survey. Mm. And I uh, sought that and I continue to do it because I am fascinated by the endless variety, the infinite range of characters and personalities of events, the uh, convergence of uh, different forces and, and factors and motivations and, and uh, personal drives and uh, unforeseen events, the importance of what James McPherson calls contingency in history, right. the, the things that no one could possibly predict and the consequences when those things happen unexpectedly. So I begin with the Puritans and uh, I did a field under Bernard Balin at Harvard, uh, probably the leading American colonial historian of his generation. Mm -hmm. But I also did a, did a field under Frank Friedell, a prize-winning biographer of Franklin D. Roosevelt mm -hmm. and other 20th century topics. So my expertise, I like to think, in history is fairly narrow in some fields and deep, but fairly broad in others. Sure, sure. Okay. For students who are in our viewing audience right now who are thinking about ACHLS and the, the free tuition for the coming academic year uh, via the generosity of Dean Velvold and the Board of Trustees has been widely publicized uh, in newspapers and will continue to be so. Uh, it's a substantive uh, savings, for, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Chesson, of about $10,000. That's correct, and that r covers the required summer school courses, one of which Professor Malagudi will right, be teaching. Right, It's a huge boon. So beyond... Uh, having the advantage of the free tuition for the junior year and beyond the advantage, and we'll talk about this a little bit, of the small class sizes and the round table discussion method. Um, let's talk a little bit about what, what a student might bring to ACHLS. What kind of skills or maybe quality, something maybe a little bit less concrete, uh, would you like a student to bring to your respective classes, whether that be something like curiosity or maybe something more concrete. Uh, Professor Malagudi, I'll, I'll start with you. Yeah, well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, an interest, uh, uh, a huge interest in the world around them um, and uh, attention to the details of what's going on in the world. Um, students who enjoy reading uh, newspapers and books and uh, all kinds of uh, materials will will thrive at an institution like this. Um, you know, people mistakenly believe that history is about the past, but every time I read it, it strikes me that it's really about the present. Yes. Um, and that, that we just failed to learn many of the lessons we should have learned quite a while ago. So uh, it's a wonderful education for uh, making students uh, capable of dealing with the here and now. Um, uh, and, and that's what they should bring, just their, their curiosity, their intellectual curiosity and their willingness to work hard and to roll up their sleeves and get a good classical, old-fashioned education. Excellent. Very good. What would you add, Dr. Chesson? We're looking for students who are self-starters, mm -hmm. highly motivated, who can thrive or have the potential to thrive in a learning environment that is purely discussion-based. Mm -hmm. No chalk and talk here at the American College, and no lectures. All the courses are taught using the discussion method, and 
That involves the instructor throwing questions at individual students or asking for volunteers uh, about questions large and small that are based on the assigned weekly reading. It, it boggles my mind, and I'm sure that, that both of you uh, who have college-age children uh, and, and who really have, have skin in, in that game as well, parents and, and students who are sacrificing to pay upwards of forty or $50,000 a year uh, have students even in beginning classes, introductory classes, sitting in lecture halls with 200 or 300 of their closest friends. And the professor is a, a distant dot down on, on mm. their visual line. Um, it's the not big, like that here. At the big research universities, uh, even UMass Boston, often your engagement with the professor is through a teaching assistant yes. or a graduate assistant uh, rather than the actual professor. Yes. We have no graduate assistants here. We have no TAs. All the teaching and all the office hours are conducted by faculty. Yes. And it's about five steps from the classroom to pr Professor Chesson's office. Yes. They know where to find him. That's true. And, and you know what? To add on, Professor uh, Malagudi, to that accessibility, um, not only are the professors here accessible, the deans are accessible, and the professors and deans from the law school show an active interest in the lives of ACHLS students. Um, so students who come here to ACHLS have the option of um, another great boon, early admission to our creating college, the Massachusetts School of Law, after successful completion of their junior year. That's correct. And they also have the option to simply get their bachelor's degree in history, do they not? By taking a series of courses in one of four areas, mm -hmm. uh, they can complete their senior year and earn a BA in history and legal studies. So they could focus on urbanization and immigration, mm -hmm. or military history and foreign policy, or uh, affirmative action, civil rights related topics, or perhaps one of our favorites, the lessons of American history. Sure. Uh, we can't always agree on what those lessons are <laughs> or, or what the meaning of history is, but we could certainly better ourselves and our country by at least talking about them. Absolutely. Very true, very true. Would you tell our audience a little bit about your own educational background? And I know, Dr. Chesson, you've spoken a little bit about yours. When you were undergraduates, what did you major in? Um, a beer. Uh, <laughs> no. um, it's a popular major, I'm told. I wouldn't know. It, it, it is. <laughs> uh, luckily, not too much of it um, at the time. I was also a history major. Were you? Yeah. Um, and after college, I toyed with the idea for a while of, of going on and doing graduate work in history. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, in the late 1970s, it was not a uh, fertile field for um, uh, jobs. Sure. Um, so I, I uh, sort of uh, threw in the towel and decided to go to law school, mm -hmm. and uh, stumbled into a uh, an education that I just uh, was right for me and that I loved. It seemed like a continuation, to a large degree, of the liberal arts education that I had received sure. in college. Um, so um, you know, there's a lot of history involved in law. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 two. Um, subjects, history, and law, I think, are just natural partners together. They do. They do go hand in hand, yeah. it seems. I've been, I've been learning that. It's been an education for me, too, and a good one, observing you, Mike. But um, it, it, they do. They, they partner so well. Mike, I, I don't think I need to ask this, but maybe there's a, a couple of surprises there. W were you a history major? I was indeed. Yeah. Uh, never switched. Knew what I wanted to do in high school. You I were went steadfast. To the College of William and Mary, I majored in history uh, after Navy service. I went to graduate school in history. I started at Johns Hopkins, and I finished and earned my Ph.D. at Harvard in 1978. Mm -hmm. uh, and I taught, as I said, for more than 30 years at University of Massachusetts in Boston. Mm -hmm. And I continue to do so here. This will be my 34th year of teaching history. We're lucky to have you. Well, thank you. You know, in our parents' day, uh, a vocational or technical education was enough, wasn't it? I remember that my, my dad, um, and we were speaking about our families before uh, taping, 
uh, went into the Navy, and that afforded him the ability to learn how to become an aircraft mechanic. And from there, he went to technical school and worked as a civilian for many years for the U.S. Air Force. And our parents' generation held lifelong jobs in places like Raytheon and Western Electric and GE and did very well. Um, it seems like the super specialized technical or vocational educational experiences of the past, uh, whereby you could sort of bypass what you refer to as a classical education, Peter. Um, those seem to have gone the way of the Etzel. And, and this is perhaps one of the reasons why an ACHLS education is so valuable for our students, whether they choose to go to law school or not. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say so, Dr. Chesson? Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I find very attractive about history is that anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. If you can read, you can study history, you can read history, you can read widely and deeply in topics of interest to you. You don't need to know foreign languages. You don't need to have advanced technical training. Some of the finest Civil War history that is being written today, and this has been true for 20 years or more, is being written by historians who are not academic historians, and they're not PhDs. Hmm. They're lawyers. They're foreign service officers. Uh, they're retired businessmen. Uh, they are, the term is used dismissively by some, uh, they're amateurs. Hmm. But the root of that word amateur is somebody who does it for the love of it. Hmm. And the people who love it, as I do, uh, know, know what uh, grabs their attention and what keeps them going. Sure, sure, very true. And, you know, I, I'm guessing that this is true for, for the law school, Professor Malaguti. I think it's even true for medical school. Uh, Postgraduate schools as well as employers, big businesses, are now asking sort of universally of recent college grads, can you write? Sure. Can you argue? Can you hold two opposing ideas in your mm -hmm. mind at the same time? Mm. Um, I think those skills there's, are valuable, yes. There, there's an unfortunate trend uh, in this country going on, um, and it's not the fault of the people who are making the choices of what kind of undergraduate degrees to pursue. Um, college has become so expensive mm. that our former notion of a liberal education is, is dying. Mm -hmm. The idea used to be that you went to college to become a, uh, a good critical thinker yeah. um, to learn how to write and um, how to uh, deal with complex material and to become a better person. And that would naturally lead to a profession of some sort, um, whether you had to pursue uh, additional education or not. Unfortunately, the um, prevailing American view of college today seems to be at 50 grand a year, yes. my kid better be able to get a job. Yes. And what we're turning out is students who are less capable of critical thought, mm -hmm. students who cannot read and write as well as they used to be able to do, and students who are not going to be able to handle the complexities of the business world or whatever world they choose to go into. Mm -hmm. So this, I'm firmly convinced that this kind of an education is, is the best kind of an education and remains vital today. I believe that the Massachusetts School of Law, and correct me if I'm wrong, is in its 23rd year now? Uh, I like to uh, think it's only about the fifth or sixth year because yes. I'd still be a young man. Yeah, but, you uh, are. That, that's about right. You are, you're still young, but the law school is 23 yeah, years old. Yeah. Our entrance exam, or at least the essay portion of it, the fact that the entrance exam offered to ACHLS students or potential ACHLS students is modeled after the law schools, isn't it, Dr. Chesson? Yes, including our grading grid, which was designed by Professor Malaguti. Yeah. Well, speak to our audience a little bit about that. For a typical college, one of the $50,000 a year colleges, which you reference, and we all know who those are, um, a student has to take the SAT um, or the ACT. And for some students, particularly students who are coming from affluent school districts or from affluent families. Uh, they can have plenty of practice in taking the SAT, get special tutoring, take it more than once. 
Even so, uh, there are some students who have problems with standardized tests, depending on their educational background, and some students who have problems with timed exams. How is the ACHLS entrance exam or and or, because I know that they're really closely related, the MSL entrance exam different from those timed standardized tests? It's relevant to what they're going to do in yeah. college. It's true. The, and it's uh, open-ended. It's <laughs> yes. untimed. Yep. Yeah. The, you know, all, all a standardized test proves, uh, if, if, if you're good at taking standardized tests, all it proves is that you're good at taking standardized tests. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, study after study have, has shown a really weak correlation between standardized tests and um, uh, how students do in college sure. or in law school. Um, I tell students all the time, they, they, they have to take in most law schools a standardized test on both ends of being a lawyer. To get into law school, they have to take the LSAT, and the majority of the bar exam is a multiple choice exam mm -hmm. today, too. And I like to tell my students, it's funny, I've never practiced multiple choice law, <laughs> um, yet to become a lawyer, I have to pass a multiple choice test. Right. Our essay test is what they're going to be doing when they come into uh, this college, and it also is what they're going to be doing when they go to the um, Mass School of Law or some other law school. It's true. They're going to write. It's true. And the curriculum, and I, I think this is, this is mirrored or, or foreshadowed even in that entrance exam, really teaches students to think on their feet, doesn't it? They have to be able to stand and deliver. Indeed. And if they don't know how to do so, we'll teach them how. Well, I suppose I should, I should ask for people with concerns, uh, is there, uh, does the college have um, a political bent? Uh, is, is the college only for liberals or only for conservatives or are all types welcome? We do indeed have a political bent. It covers the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> we had a student uh, last year, born in Massachusetts, but yes. now lives in New Hampshire mm -hmm. where she's a wife and mother, very conservative. And a guy from Charlestown, who is the aide to a Democratic congressman from Massachusetts, very liberal, although he wasn't that way when he started out in the projects. The two of them had these knockdown, drag out arguments almost every night with other students egging them on, arguing such questions as the proper definition of the American middle class. Yes. At 7.30, we took our regular break and these two regularly went across the street to Dunkin Donuts together right. and came back and resumed where they left off, hammer and tongs, going at it right. for four hours each yeah. week. Yeah, but they could leave friends. Absolutely. And, and once again, there's a history lesson there. <laughs> sure. You know, uh, Adams uh, and Jefferson uh, yeah. were arch enemies um, at one point, but also best friends at one point as sure. well. Sure, sure. And uh, the Founding Fathers uh, disagreed vehemently on the shape and um, uh, system that our government should take. Yes. Yet they broke bread together, they socialized together, they lived together. Yeah. Um, you know, we always, uh, I always say my motto in the classroom is be as passionate as you want, mm -hmm. but argue the issues, not the personalities. Yes, that's true. Um, arguing, um, that, that's very good. It, opinion is not enough. Your opinion, well, it, as it, great as it might be. And it's the fundamental tenet of negotiation when yes. you're a lawyer, is, is you, you can't personalize it. You have to, have to uh, uh, stick to the issues, and that way you can get things accomplished. Super valuable. The courses here are taught seminar style, and a seminar, like a court of law, is an adversarial proceeding. Yes. So the students, some of them are surprised that not everyone agrees with them, mm -hmm. that others may be challenging their opinions some statement they just made, uh, but it's never ad hominem. Mm -hmm. And I tell them frequently that you should do as adversaries do in law, strive mightily, yeah. but eat and drink as friends. That's, that's wonderful. That's from Taming of the Shrew. That's wonderful. I should have known that too. That's good. I'm going to keep that in mind. Michael. I'm sure that there are folks in our audience, either prospective students or their grandmas or neighbors or co-workers who are saying, these guys are neat, I like what I hear. If there are people in our audience who like what they hear and want to apply to ACHLS, how can they do it? 
Everything they need is on our website at www.achls.org. We're at 1 Stiles Road, Suite 104, Salem, New Hampshire, exit 2 off 93, the mm -hmm. Canopy Lake exit. Yes. And we'd be happy to talk to you, uh, schedule an interview, an appointment, uh, arrange for you to take the essay exam for entrance. All that we require is three letters of recommendation, a personal statement, uh, a grade point average of 2.7, and 60 credits from a community college or a four-year school that you may have transferred from. Mm -hmm. Or if you're somebody whose educational path has been long, schools you may have attended. If you've been moving about, That's as right. life causes us to do sometimes. Students come because they want to complete a BA mm -hmm. or because they want to go on from community college. Sure. And we've had both categories. When your students leave, let, let's say, I'll ask you, Professor Malaguti. Tonight is your first night of class. At the end of the summer session, which, and Mike and I can tell you by experience, flies by, the semesters fly by, what would you like your students to have gained? Improvement in their critical thinking skills. Sure. Um, it's, you know, I'll, I'll preface it by saying it's a joint endeavor that, sure. we're, that mm -hmm. we're engaged in here. We feel very um, um, committed to the learning process and uh, we ask them to get committed to the learning process as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they're certainly going to, to walk away with, with better critical thinking skills. It's a process to become a good thinker. Right. It's a discipline to become a good thinker. And um, it's gonna help them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that they're gonna come away as better writers as well. Yes. And as better oral advocates. Yes, and you know, I think that that is a great boon when you have different educational components, constitutional law, history, writing, economics, Professor Fagestrom isn't with us today, uh, working <coughs> hand in hand. Uh, I know that I have benefited from, from partnering with your history class, just as I'm sure um, the constitutional law and economics will meld well together. We have an open house coming up at the college on June 29th. That's right. And we would welcome uh, curious folks to come by. Uh, they can meet deans from the law school and from the college here, professors uh, from the law school and from ACHLS. Um, and students are always welcome to sit in on classes during the regular fall and, and spring semesters and the summer semester as well. It, it's a super welcoming environment. Um, I thank you gentlemen uh, for, for taking the time to speak with, with us and, and thank you, with Andrew. our audience today. Um, so just to recap what you said, Dr. Chesson, our website is www.achls.org. That's right. And potential students can find links to our syllabi, uh, the books we're reading, uh, the books our students will read, our academic calendar, yep. our applications, all of that good stuff. The entire curriculum and the announcement of free tuition for the 2011-2012 academic year. Online syllabus. How much would that have helped us back in our day, having a year tuition free? Wish I would have had that. That would have been very good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Professor Malaguti. Thank you, Dr. Chesson. Thanks for joining us at History Roundtable.